Your humility breaks the back of the locusts and the plagues. And your humility woos the Father to release provision from heaven. I believe August is a month of harvest. Harvest of revival, harvest of resources, and a harvest of redemption. I believe in this month the Lord is setting you up as you prepare your heart, as you examine yourself, introspect yourself, and get ready before the high holy days. This is the last month before the last month of the year. Happy August. Okay, August, uh, like I said earlier, uh, it's the eighth month in the Greek calendar. Eight stands for new beginnings, all right? Uh, God's releasing something new. Uh, Isaiah, uh, what, 46? The Bible says, Behold, I do a new thing, all right? It doesn't say I'm doing an old thing, all right? The Bible does not say I'm doing something that man does. I'm doing something that was done before. No, I am doing a new thing or oh, a new creation. We are part of a new breed, a new prototype, a new creature, new creation, like the new heavens and the new earth. I am doing a new thing. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, once again, give us some hearts and likes if you are just logging on now. All right. Uh, but I believe this month is a month of harvest. All right. Some say harvest. Some say harvest. I believe this is a month of harvest. All right. And uh, if you're writing notes, do write it down. Probably... At the end of this, I'm going to type it all on in, in the caption uh, section. But I do believe that August is a month of harvest. Someone say harvest. Amen. And let me tell you why. All right. Not just by the rain of word that the Lord spoken to me in my spirit from weeks ago, but because of even the, the revelation of the Hebrew calendar. And just to let you know, God does not only move in the Greek calendar. He moves in the Hebrew calendar. Okay. Um, and listen, the Bible says uh, that there's times and seasons, times and seasons. There are appointed times. Someone say appointed times. There are appointed times for your destiny. There are dates. Come on now. There is a date with your blessing on it. There is an expiration date. There is a due date. There is a beginning date. There is a birth date, birth date. There is a date, an appointed date time and season and of course all the uh biblical or we call the jewish feasts the seven feasts of god actually uh, point to jesus yeshua hamashiach because he's a fulfillment of the seven feasts of god i know i've done an extensive teaching before on the seven feasts of god and how that points to jesus how jesus is the fulfillment of all the feasts and how there are open heavens i remember i learned this from my friend david herzog all right, and I'll tell you this publicly as I have before. David Herzog is uh, in just in conversation with the man of God. Uh, he's he's probably released the most amount of revelation just in conversation, just face to face over the dinner table. He's not trying to teach. He's not trying to preach. We're just talking, and he just released a revelation. But I remember he said this. He says that there's um, there's times and seasons where you could feel open heavens even more like uh jerusalem israel whenever you go to jerusalem and israel it's like the veil is torn there and you can literally feel god in flesh there <clears throat> all right you go to the bonnie bray house at the azusa revival just down the street from my church right here one mile away you go to the bonnie bray house you can feel a tangible presence why because there was history that was made with God at a certain geographical location. And God made a covenant with that man, that woman, that prophet and said, because of what you did to me and with me in that geographical sphere, I'm going to so mark it with my presence that it's going to be present no matter what. <clears throat> and so David Herzog shared that. Uh, there's times and seasons. So that's why the seven feasts of God, hear me now. The seven feasts of God, the biblical uh, Hebrew feasts, not the Greek feasts. All right. Jesus was not born on Christmas. All right. <laughs> all right. Uh, Valentine's Day. What the heck? Uh, again, God can move mysteriously, humorously. He could use a donkey. He could use you. He could use me. All right. Now you're offended. Uh, anyways, bam, bam. Robo shit. But, you know, uh, according to the Hebrew feasts, and that's why Jesus, you see, even in the Gospels, in his ministry, I didn't know I was going to teach, uh, go this far on this subject. But even Jesus himself, 
You see, in the Gospels, whenever he revealed himself in, in a way, it was always at the feast. All right, I may have to do a whole new teaching on this just for you, all right? Uh, so all of that to say, David Herzog, my friend, was sharing how in the seven feasts of God, the biblical feast, God, there, it's like accelerated times of grace. Accelerated times of grace. And, and hear me now. Um, right now we are in the Hebrew month of Av. Someone say Av. A-V. Are you from the Antelope Valley? A-V. This, we are in the Hebrew month of Av, A-V. Someone say Av, A-V. Write that down, Av, A-V. All right, and do give us some hearts and likes. I appreciate all the hearts and likes, guys. Um, and do share this on your wall. We are in uh, the Hebrew month of Av, A-V. Excuse me. And Av in the Hebrew means father, okay? That's where we get Ava, Abba, Abe, Ebi, okay? Uh, so Av in the Hebrew means father. So right now, in this month of August, we are in the month of Av, which is the month of the Father. We are in the month in the Hebrew calendar where the Father, not Jesus, not the Mashiach, not the Ruach Kodesh, but the Father, the Godhead, Abba Father, Creator, the Godhead Father of the whole Triune Trinity, he himself in this month of August is going to show up and manifest himself in power, in miracles, and in signs and wonders. Abba, Abba, Father himself has heard the cries of you, your children, your family. He has heard the cries, Robo. So he is going to show up and he's going to show up in power and he's going to release provision and miracles and greater glory in this month of off. Hallelujah. And also, uh, the the Jews will take it even a step further, and they call this month not just off, even though it is off, but they call it uh, uh, Menachem. Someone say Menachem, like you got some morning <laughs> Menachem, Menachem Av. August is the month of Menechem Av. Menechem means the comforter, the counselor. This is a month where the Father is going to comfort you and counsel you. I, I, I love using this analogy. Many of you, uh, especially if you live in a cold um, region where it's a little, uh, you know, frisky, right? Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, you have a blanket over you like a comforter. It, it's heavy. It's filled with wool or cotton or, you know, feathers. And, you know, it comforts you. It counsels you. You know, uh, babies growing up, you know, you got a blankie going around. And, uh, you know, it's it's comforting to you. In this month of August, the father Av is going to be menechem. He's going to comfort you with heavy, weighty glory, concerns, cares. He loves you. He's concerned about you. He cares for you. And because he so does so, he's going to come and cover you like a mother hen covers her chicks. All right. How do we know uh, that this is a month of harvest? How do we know that this is a month of harvest? I'm just writing again. Please like and share. Come on, guys. Love it, love it, love it. If you're loving it, give us some hearts and likes. Bam, bam. How do you know this is a month of har harvest? Because... This month is the month right before uh, Elul, E-L-U-L, -L, Elul, which is the last month of the Hebrew calendar, which is, of course, the month of uh, High Holy Days of Rosh Hashanah. That's right. So September next month, it's, it's we're about to shift into a whole new Hebrew year, 5780. And in fact, if you read my prophetic blog I released on Monday, it's not just a new Hebrew year. It's a new Hebrew decade. Come on now. It's a new decade that we're about to enter into. So this is the last month before Elul, which is the, uh, the last month of the year. You follow me? So why is this important? How does that signify harvest? Because I'm declaring over you, this is the month of harvest. Why is August... Mechahem Av, 
Why is this Menachem Av, excuse me, Menachem Av, why is this month the month of harvest? Because one month before the High Holy Days, there is a lot of introspection. Someone say introspection. All right? No, no, no. And I'm not talking about introspection from you to your neighbor. What did Jesus say? Why are you calling out the splinter in their eye when you have a big old plank in your eye? Do you not see it? <laughs> this is a month of introspection, which means that it's a time of searching hearts. Now, you better hear me now. It's a time of searching hearts. Now, what happens when you introspect, when you look within? What happens? Revival. What happens when you begin to look within? Revival. What does that mean? That means when you begin to look within, you begin to soften your heart. And the hard ground, in the agricultural term, the hard ground of the land becomes tilled over and over. It becomes softened. That's where the verse comes. Uh, break forth your fallow ground so that you may sow for yourself a harvest of righteousness. Robo Sharaba. You begin to till the hardened uh, heart of man. You begin to till the hardened soul, the hardened ground of your heart, of the land. And you begin to introspect, which means you begin to dig deep. You begin to go in, go ahead. You begin to go in in this month. Dig deep because you're introspecting and you begin to see as he sees. And now you begin to repent. And as you repent, you come into revival. Remember, repentance always precedes revival. All right. And repentance is the preparation for the manifestation of revival. But I believe in this month, harvest, menechem af. As we introspect and prepare, someone say prepare. As we introspect, prepare, and get ready for the high holy days, okay? It's a month of tilling the ground. It's a month of examination, of preparation. It is a month of going deep, of going in, within. It's a month of repentance, all right? And remember, repentance is not a cuss word. Repentance is not an F word. In fact, it is an A++ word, okay? Joyful repentance, amen? Renewing of the mind, changing of the mind, changing of the guard. And as you do so, you will see these things. All right, uh, I'm going to share three three things on what you need to expect this month. And Menachem Ah. And once again, if you're logging on now, God bless you. Welcome to the Facebook Live. Or if you're watching uh, on the replay, do give us some hearts and likes and do share. Because I know this is a download from the Lord. I know. And how do you know? Test it. Test it. Menechem Av, the Father is coming to comfort you and to come and clothe you in power in this month as you turn towards Him. Come on, draw near to God and He will draw near to you. Repentance, introspection. And that's why you're going to be feeling such open heavens this month. I'm telling you. You're going to feel such a nearness, literally, where the air is so thin that it literally, shoop, you're just there because that's where we are. We're here with him in the heavenly places. So let me tell you, this month in Menachem Av in August, you're going to see three things on the realm of harvest. All right, you guys ready? Three things, I'm telling you. Number one, you're going to see a, a harvest of revival. Okay, you're going to see a harvest of revival. And I already started sharing and talking about this. If you're writing notes, just type it down, somebody, for me, please. All right, in this month of Menachem Av, August, you're going to see a harvest of revival. That's number one. Harvest of revival. Why? Because in this month, once again, as I shared earlier, as you repent, as you turn to the Lord, do introspection, examination, preparation, robo saye, your heart begins to get soft and the Lord begins to come and woo you and he begins to dwell with you. He begins to sit with you and eat with you. And in this month, there's going to be a revival. What does that mean? That means that the dead things are coming to life. The dead things are coming alive. Big difference from revival and awakening. All right? It's, it's of the same spirit, but different. Why? Because revival means that something that's dead needs to come back to life. Awakening means that something is asleep and now is becoming awake. Are you dead or are you asleep? Wake up, O sleeper. Rise from your grave. So I believe this month there's going to be a revival. 
All right, dead things in your life, in your spirit. You felt like it was dead. Come on now. All right, who here knows that some dead things need to remain dead, okay? Those dead friendships, all right? Those dead habits, okay? Those dead old things you did in the flesh, all right? Robo, those dead uh, things. All right, some things need to be remain dead. Stop trying to resurrect things that God never wanted to be resurrected. Stop trying to raise back from the grave what you're meant to keep in the grave. Amen, hallelujah. Let that stay in the grave and let the Lord Jesus Christ in this month bring resurrection power. Have you been feeling like, man, I've been getting crushed. You know, T.D. Jakes just released his book a few months ago and I'm seeing everywhere on social media, the crushing prayer, the hour of crushing. Oh, make me a vessel. Oh, I'm so sad. Ooh, boo, ooh, ooh, ooh. Come on. It's time for resurrection power this month. This God's about to release a spirit of revival and all the dead things are coming alive. I'm telling you people of God, uh, rubble, your dead hopes, your dead joys, your dead dreams, okay? The Lord's releasing resurrection power and all the boo-hoo, humdrum, the sadness, the gloom, it's going away, okay? It's going away. So this is a month of harvest of revival and I believe God's gonna release great power signs and wonders amen and uh the lord's gonna uh he's gonna begin to release uh just such faith such an ease such a grace like never before if you believe that and receive it if you feel it in your spirit say amen give some hearts and likes once again do share this on your wall uh second thing for you to be expecting for in menachem Av this month this month of harvest all right number one as i said earlier Expect a harvest of revival. Amen. Hallelujah. Number two, expect a harvest of resources. Someone say resources. Expect a harvest of resources. Come on now. Have you been feeling like the grasshopper invasion in Las Vegas? This plague has been eating away at your finances. And listen, resources are not just finances. Resources are relationships. It's time. It is finances, currency. Resources is um, robosa, you know, it's uh, uh, experience. You know, I mean, there's so many resources and I believe in this month of Menachem Av, August, the Lord is going to release a harvest of resources. A release a harvest of resources. Hallelujah. And once again, what did I say? Earlier in the beginning of this video, Menachem uh, uh uh, as we're in preparation examination, uh, you know, unto the high holy days, introspection, examination, that causes repentance, someone say repentance, which releases the resources of the Father. Your humility breaks the back of the locusts and the plagues, and your humility woos the Father to release provision from heaven. I'm telling you, in this month of uh, August, there's gonna be a harvest of resources, financial, okay? Relational, okay? I'm telling you, many of you are going to begin to connect with new people because when you begin to connect with new people, it means that there's a, it's, it's a prophetic sign of a new sphere you've entered into. It's a prophetic sign of a new circle you've entered into. Who here knows that there's many circles and spheres you cannot just intrude in, but you need to be invited in. And I declare over you that this month the Lord is inviting you in to new places. He is inviting you in to new platforms, new platitudes. He is inviting you in to new circles, new rooms, new spheres. He is inviting you in because this is a month where God's preparing you to be launched into the new year, the high holy days. Baruch Hashem Adonai. Um, <clears throat> as I was uh, studying last night and I was, as I was studying uh, the Hebrew calendar and the different Hebrew meanings and words, uh, repentance in Hebrew is of course tshuva, C-H-U-V-A, tshuva, okay? Tshuva, and when, whenever you tshuva, or teshuvah, whenever you repent, whenever you turn to the, towards the Lord, He, His face will turn towards you. 
And wherever the light of his face shines, that means it's the favor of the king. It is the favor of the king. Whenever the face of the king turns towards you, it means that you have favor, which is grace. I believe in this month, the face of the king is turned towards you. The face, the clouds of heaven, the dew of Hermon is turning towards you. And I believe in this month, many things are going to turn around and shift for you. Hallelujah. People are going to begin to turn to you. Hallelujah. Resources are turning to you. Hallelujah. Robo Sara, things are turning towards you. Because in this month of August, expect a harvest of resources, relationships, finances, uh, uh, platforms, promotions. Amen. Because the Lord knows that you've been crushed, you have been dead, you have been waiting, you, you, you've been in the hole, you've been in the grave. So that's why wherever there's revival, there's going to be resources. Hear me now. We see Korea, and I love the story. I was just in Mongolia about a month, month and a half ago. I was just in Mongolia. And Mongolia is an emerging nation, okay? And uh, I prophesy in the name of Jesus that Mongolia is going to be a Christian nation. And not only that, but Mongolia is going to become one of the top 10, 20 uh, uh, most prosperous economical nations in the world. How do you know this? Because the gospel prospers. Look at the UK. Look at Europe. Look at America. The gospel prospers. Look at Nigeria right now. The gospel prospers. Look at South Korea. I'm Korean by blood, but not by nature. I'm kingdom by nature. But look at South Korea. South Korea got invaded with the gospel. And when the, when they began to pray, Yonggi Cho, the, uh, the Pyongyang revival, there was a revival rumbling in the forest, really. There were no churches at the time. They were just in forests. Such thousands of large gatherings. They were meeting in forests in between trees like you do in Cambodia or you do in Myanmar. They were just meeting. And the power of the Holy Ghost came. And that's where the Koreans learned to pray. Come on. And as South Korea became a Christian nation, listen here. After the Korean War... South Korea was one of the lowest 10 poorest countries in the world. Google it, research it. But now, literally in the last 50 years, Korea is the top 10 richest, most prosperous nations in the world. God will do it. God can do it. Make disciples over nations. Come on. He loves cities. He loves nations. He loves countries. He loves regions. The Lord, my God, loves countries. You are a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. Shine forth your light. And now in 50 years, come on now. My dad, my parents were alive right after the Korean War. My grandmother, my grandparents went through the Korean War. They went through devastation and how South Korea was nothing, bottom 10 lowest, poorest country in the world. And just in 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, as the gospel, as Christianity, Roboso began to emerge and began to spark revival. And as he began to send out missionaries across the world, now Korea is top 10 prosperous country. What are you, what are you watching this Facebook Live from? Your, your Samsung, hello, your Android, your iPhone, do you know that Samsung, uh, and I, listen, I'm not bragging on Korea because I'm Korean. I'm bragging on what God did and what he's still doing because of that revival. So out of revival, releases resources, all right? Praise the Lord. Listen, this is not prosperity gospel. This is the gospel. It's the gospel of the kingdom. Not the gospel of poverty, not the gospel of prosperity, and not the American gospel. This is the gospel of the kingdom. See, first is kingdom, and all these things will be added unto you for the proclamation and the demonstration of his good news to the world. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My light just went off, but you still see me. Third thing. All right, I'm preaching, guys. Third thing. For you to expect a harvest in this month the third thing all right the third thing i want you to stay right here because this is going to keep bothering me stay right here just give me one minute here all right stay right here
Yeah, you guys probably still see me because I still, or hear me, because I got these cool AirPods. So wherever I walk, you could actually hear me, right? I'm just gonna put a light on. And once again, give us some hearts, likes, shares, um, share, share, share. And it just bears witness with you, amen? Uh, I actually, at the end of this, after I, I, I do pray, I actually wanna maybe take some questions or something or whatever. Uh, third thing, someone say third, all right? The third thing for you to expect a harvest in, in this month, I'm back. This is a month of your comeback. This is the month of your Holy Ghost comeback. I'm telling you guys. Uh, the third thing you should expect to harvest in is uh, redemption. Someone say redemption. All right. This is a month of redemption. All right. And the reason why I look like a ninja is because you don't see the top of my hair properly because it's all black there. I got to do, I got to get a better hair light in the back. That's some um, media terms, if y'all don't know. But this is the month of redemption, okay? And let me break it down here. It's so funny because Menekem Av, Av, uh, you know, it's the month of the Father. It's a month of the comfort, the counseling, the, the covering <clears throat> of the Father. You know, this is a month of where the Father is showing up and He's covering and He's showing His power and, you know, He's showing up for His people and He's answering prayers, you know. This is a month of awe. Ah, come on, this is the month of the Father. Come on, that is so good. You know, he, He's kind, He's gracious, He's merciful, right? But um, also in this month, sorry to be a downer, in the Hebrew uh, history, all right, this is our history. Do you know, not know that you're Jew as well? Okay, this is what happened to our family members. All right, uh, but this <clears throat> this month also has one of the actually has the most darkest and destructive date in all of the Jewish year and calendar, and it's called Tishbaav. Someone say Tishbaav. I'm going to write that down right now too. Tishbaav. Okay. And what is Tishbaav? Tishbaav is nine days, or it is the day, or nine days, or the day of mourning and sadness. So actually right now, uh, most Jews and scholars will say you are in Tishbaav because on the 9th of Av, okay, the 9th of Av, which is the 9th of, uh, uh, which is actually, I believe, the 10th of August this month, is the most uh, destructive, most grievous, detrimental day that's ever happened to all of the Hebrews, to, to really the Bible. That's when the first temple was destroyed and the second temple was destroyed. That was an open window <clears throat> when the spies, you got to hear me now, because I'm talking about open windows and the cycles of, of, of those things. But when the spies, when Moses and his days, when the spies were about to go in, that was the time when the spies rejected entering into, hear me, I'm prophesying. That was the day when the 10 spies rejected going into the promised land, rejected crossing over, and they feared and they ran back into their orphan spirit rather than trusting in awe of their father. And because they rejected, uh, the, the crossing over and in the promise in the nature of the Father. Therefore, that became an open window of destruction. That sin that the spies committed, which led all of those Israelites to not enter. That's why leaders, it's so important for you and I to have the fear of God because whatever we do will affect the masses. Whatever we do will lead either astray or lead towards the greater glory. And so the 10 spies rejected the counsel, rejected the Torah, rejected the prophetic word. They rejected the, the truth of what God was doing. Come on. Even though he provided one manna, even though he delivered them from Egypt, even though he split the Red Sea in half, even though he, they saw the plagues come upon the Egyptians and they saw all the supernatural provision, but still they doubted God. And that became Tishba'ah. That was the one of the saddest days in all of history. And the Bible literally says that it's like God mourned. 
God grieved, God mourned. Can you imagine that? Not just the Holy Spirit, but the Father mourned. Yeah, you could grieve the Spirit, but what about grieving the Father? And, and that day became an open window. And years later, that's the same day. Is it a coincidence or is it not? It's the same day where the temple was destroyed. Years later, King Herod, his temple was destroyed in 70 AD as the same day. Triple confirmation. Do you believe it? Can you believe it? Do you understand what's happening? So the 10th of August is the Tishba Av, which is the 9th of Av, which is the most detrimental, the most uh, uh, destructive, grievous, sad morning day, especially for the temple to be destroyed. You know, uh, for the Jews, the Hebrews, the temple is the most sacred thing. Why? Because that's where the presence of Yahweh, of Hashem resides. It's the most important thing. If there's no worship, you don't win victories. If there's no worship, you don't win wars. If there's no worship, then you don't gain a territory. If there's no worship, then the people are led astray and the agriculture is not uh, alive. So that's why the temple is so important. But follow me, follow me. I'm about to bring this to a close, uh, to this section, to number three. However, someone said, however, because it's the month of the Father, people will ask and say, what well, is the month of Av, which means Father, it's the month of Menachem Av, which is uh, the comfort, the counting, the covering of the Father. But how can such a destructive, evil thing happen in the month of the Father? How can something so great happen in the month of the Father? Father, where are you? Father, where have you been? Lord, is this you? Is this your will? If you were here, it would have been okay. If you were around, this wouldn't have happened. Where are you? Where are you, Dad? Where are you, Father? And, you know, a lot of people will, are in the same place right now. Where art thou, Romeo? Where art thou? And, uh, <laughs> and a lot of people are in the same place. However, the week right after, all right? The week right, see, donde, donde esta? The week right after is the 15th of Av, which, and listen, this is me studying Hebraic calendar, Hebrew. This is me doing research extensively on the prophetic revelation and release of this month that we're in. So I'm gonna say glory. The 15th of all, they call it the day of redemption. It is a day of redemption. Redemption. What does that mean? It's a day of redemption. And the definition of redemption is the act of salvation. Or hear, hear me now. Act of salvation or the, the act of glory. Because when you regain something Possession in redemption, it is not just an act of salvation, but now it's glory, which means retribution and recompense. So this is a month of redemption, recompense, retribution, and the 15th of Av is the day of redemption. Why? Because Jews, the Talmud actually, not just Jews, the Talmud says that it is the most glorious day in all of the Hebrew calendar, right next to Yom Kippur. Right next to Yom Kippur, the 15th of Av is the most glorious day in all of the Hebrew calendar. And it's a mystery still. Why? Because on the 15th of Av, the daughters of Jerusalem will go forth in the streets and in the vineyards, and they would begin to dance and they would begin to woo their lover, their husbands to be in the 15th of August. It was a time of celebration. It was a time of wooing. It was a time of dancing. It was a time of feasting. Because out of the fires of destruction in Tishba'av came forth the fires of redemption and celebration and recompense. Whew. Somebody's still here with me. Someone say amen. Give me some hearts and likes, people of God. I'm slowing down on my energy. I can feel it. Uh, 
Hallelujah. The month of awe, people, and angry faces too. It really doesn't matter. I like angry faces too. Because like I said before, that tells me who needs to get delivered. Okay. <laughs> um, they also call, uh, excuse me, not, this month of awe, they call it the king is in the field. The Jews call it the king is in the field. The field. What field are you in? The king is there. This is the month where the king, your heavenly father, is in the field. He's present with you in the field. What, does that remind you of somebody? Yes, Ruth and Boaz. The king is in a field like Boaz. The king is present like your kinsman, redeemer. Av is the month of redemption. Av is the month of recompense. Av is the month of retribution. Wow. I'm going to bring this to a close here. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to pray. Okay. Uh, I believe this month the Father, Av, in Hebrew, Menachem Av, He's going to be coming down and clothing you, being so present. He's going to be covering you. You're going to feel the comforting power, the counseling nature. You're going to feel His grace. I believe this month, you're going to experience the king in the field. You're going to um, you're going to celebrate like the 15th of Av, the Talmud. What is the Talmud? The Talmud is lit for the Jews. It is uh, the New Testament for the Jews. It is the, the rabbinical writings that is the second most important writings, literature, to the Torah, which is the Bible. And in the Talmud, it says the 15th of Av, which is the 16th, all right, which is literally not this Friday, not next Friday, but in two Fridays. The 16th of Av is the 15th of Av, which is 16th Friday. It is the most mystical, mysterious, yet glorious day in all of the Hebrew calendar where the daughters of Jerusalem would go out into the vineyards and they would dance. They would sing, praise, worship, and they would begin to woo their lover, woo their husbands to them, like the kinsman redeemer. I believe August is a month of harvest, harvest of revival, harvest of resources, and a harvest of redemption. I believe in this month the Lord is setting you up as you prepare your heart, as you examine yourself, introspect yourself, and get ready before the high holy days. This is the last month before the last month of the year. This month and next month, you guys watch, people of God. This is the month of new beginnings. The Lord is releasing grace for you to begin to move supernaturally as you turn towards Him. The face of the King is turning towards you. Someone say hallelujah. Expect these things in the month of August, people of God, in Menachem Av. We are in the month, Hebrew month, of Menachem Av. Oof, I'm, I'm just whacked right now. Lift up your hands right now. I want to pray for you. I worship you, and I worship you. The reason I live is to worship you and i worship you and i worship you Ooh. the reason i live is to worship you i just heard this People are going to repent. People are going to come to you and repent. This is a month where people that have accused you, hurt you, used you, abused you, slandered you. This is a month where people are going to repent. So, it's going to be a restoration of relationships, redemption. People are going to begin to turn and repent and apologize and humble themselves before you and the Lord. And you will do the same. Hallelujah. I want to pray. Father, I pray for my 65 friends watching now and all of those later on the replay. Hallelujah. I pray, Father, that you will mark them with the Holy Ghost. I pray that um, 
that there will be such supernatural grace, momentum. You will be pushed forward, thrusted forward in this month. As you turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look for His wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strange. We dim in the light of His glory and grace. Oh, my gosh. This is your month, people of God. And expect a harvest of revival and a harvest of resources and a harvest of redemption. Fire! If you believe it, someone say, Amen. Hallelujah.